Welcome back. Murder, mayhem and quirky detectives. Despite the crime stories that pack our papers and fill our screens, it seems the public appetite for thrillers knows no bounds. As top best-selling author Michael Connolly knows only too well, a master in the art of mystery and crime fiction, he started life as a police reporter before becoming a writer and creating the character Detective Hieronymus Bosch, Harry for short. We met this week in London to talk about The Drop, his latest Bosch book, his 17th Bosch book, out of 26 novels in all. Michael, the latest figures say 42 million copies, 39 languages, all a fantastic record and so on. When did you first get the feeling, the desire to be a writer? Was it about 16 or what? It was a little older than that. Um, I didn't start reading for myself till after I was out of um, high school and I was in college at the university. And then I started uh, going to bookstores and just finding stuff for myself to read. And uh, when I discovered the works of Raymond Chandler, something about his works hit me and that, that's when I had that moment where I said, I want to try to do this. So he was the inspiration, really? Yeah, really. Um, I, I could go back a little bit further and start with a movie. I saw a movie based on one of his books. That led me to read the book, and that led me to the decision, I want to try to do this. And uh, how would you compare his great character, Philip Marlowe, with yours, Hieronymus Bosch? Well, I, 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 hate, I hesitate to even uh, make a comparison. He's kind of at the top of the pyramid. He has all these followers, and I'm just one of them. But he seems to have set a pretty marvelous standard of um, crime fiction as not just entertainment, but um, social um, reflection and, um, and just marvelous writing. It's odd. Why is, why is murder so popular? Um, I think it's because of the solving of murder. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a chaotic world out there, uh, and these books kind of restore order, even if it's only for a moment, even though it's fiction. You can escape into these, and the world makes sense at the end of them, usually. And I think there's something um, reassuring about that, and I think that's what brings uh, people back to it. You know, another aspect is that they're usually about people who are put in extreme circumstances, and we all want to know how we would act if we had to step up and show what we're made of. So you had moved from Florida to L.A. by the time you really wrote your, your first book, hadn't you? Yeah, well, I, I have like the, uh, the secret like most writers have. I wrote a couple books that never went anywhere, never got out of my office. They were learning experiences. And I did them, I wrote them in Florida, and I felt for the third time I needed to shake up things in my life. So I moved 3,000 miles away to a new place, the, the land of, of the guy who inspired me, Raymond Chandler, and tried again there. And that became my first published novel. And that was The Black Echo, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And that was the first, and that, and that took off pretty well straight away. Um, on a critical level, it did um, very well for me, and it kind of established me. And, but the, the growth in terms of sales and so forth, um, and moving to other countries, was, was kind of incremental to about my fifth book, and then things sort of took off. And in fact, um, you'd been a, a crime reporter before, before you turned to being a novelist and so on. Did you actually go into crime reporting planning to move on to be a novelist? Did you know you were going to end up as a novelist if God allowed it? Um, the, if God allowed it, yeah. I mean, planning sounds too um, like I'm a master uh, strategist. It's, it was a hope, you know. I, I wanted to do this. Um, I thought if I became a reporter and worked the crime beat, I would be exposed to the world I want to write about in fiction. And so the hope was that it would lead to that. And I'm, I've just been very lucky that it did lead to that. And when you start on a novel, Michael, um, how far do you know where the plot is going to go? Or, or do you discover the plot as you're writing it? I pretty much discovered it along the way. I, I really liken it to um, jazz, um, improvisational music. Um, I have a glimmer of an idea where I'm heading towards. You know, I kind of have the light at the end of the tunnel and I head in that direction, but I, you know, there's 400 pages in there that I don't know what's going to happen. And that's the joy of the creative process, to see if it works. Sometimes it doesn't. You back out, you throw out pages. I haven't written a book where I didn't throw out lots of pages because I made mistakes or I didn't like what I did. But that's, it's more fulfilling at the end of every day to just, it either happens or it doesn't. Is the, is the drop, the new, the new book, the latest book, is that based on a true story in any way or 
it's, inspired by a true story or not? It has tendrils of truth in it. Uh, little things I've heard, you know, there, there's a guy in it uh, who's a big political figure in the book, um, somewhat based on a former uh, police chief of Los Angeles who um, uh, was more or less uh, let go from the police department, then he ran for the city council and became a city councilman, a powerful person who, who now is the, probably the biggest critic of the police department. And I like that idea of some guy circling back. And, and so there's a character somewhat based on that. So I take little things like that and, and mix them together and um, you know come up with something that hopefully is my own. What do you find that you want to throw out? What, what, what do you say, that's not, that doesn't work? Well, I think uh, reading and writing are very close and that it's about momentum. And so I am, my heart's just critic. And so I reread my work. Every morning I read what I wrote the day before. And if it doesn't move, if it doesn't have a certain momentum, I got to get rid of it because um, I'm just reading maybe 10 or 12 pages and I'm going to eventually ask someone to read 400 or 500 <laughs> pages and it has, to, it has to move. And I don't care whether it's a crime novel or great literary work, there's got to be an innate momentum in, in the pages. And uh, I think I have a pretty strong eye of noting when it's not there and when it, if it's not there, it's got to go. It's got to go, yeah. Because, I mean, how much of you is there in, in the Harry Bosch character? It depends on what book you're reading, because yeah. I've been very lucky. I've been able to write him over almost 20 years. And, and in the beginning years, he was quite different from me. In the more recent years, we happen to have a daughter who's the same age, so I can't help but share stuff with him. Uh, his daughter says things my daughter says to me, and so now there's a, a pretty good connection between Harry and me. And what would you, what would you say to, uh, to would-be writers um, watching this conversation? I mean, what is it that makes a bestseller? I don't know what makes a bestseller, but I know that like, and whatever, whatever your pursuit is in life, the more you do it, the better you should get at it. And, and so you shouldn't, if you're going to be a writer, don't talk about it, just write. You know, keep your head down and write. That's, the, the best advice is the most simple. Keep your head down and write. Right. And, and always go for the next book being better than the one before. Yeah, I mean, you've got to improve. I mean, hopefully my books are on an upward trajectory in terms of the quality and, and um, the effort I put into them. Uh, I've been doing it a long time, but I, there's a lot I can still learn, and, and there's uh, always room for improvement. You don't need any best wishes for the drop, because I'm sure it'll go straight to number one the way the others do, but thanks a million for being with us. Well, thanks for having me. It's my honor. <laughs>